What's up, Wise Flyers? David here. Today I'm going to give a review of the app Turo. If you're not familiar, Turo is a car rental app similar to Airbnb, but only for cars. People are allowed to rent out their personal cars and do it at a much cheaper price compared to the commercial car rental companies. So today I'm going to give a review of the app from the consumer side, not the renter side. I rented the BMW i8. It's a 2019. Currently filming this in November of 2019. So in this video, I'll tell you my experience with using Turo, uh, how to use it, how to rent cars, and how much this car cost me, and all that good stuff. So if you were to ask me what my favorite car is, it would definitely be the BMW i8. I love how it is a hybrid car, so it's electric, it's gas, you could charge it, it has a charging port in it, so I think it's really cool. So if I were to own any car it probably wouldn't be this i'm not sure i would actually own it but i would love to drive it myself and use it and experience it but i don't want any of the headaches of driving it to parking lots and having people move around it and do stuff like that so that's why renting it for the day is perfect for me and if you have any dream cars that you've always wanted to drive i think this is a great way to do it you don't have to do it through the big car rental companies which will charge probably three or four times the price that i paid for this for the day which i'll go into later on the pricing as well as lamborghinis ferraris other supercars exotic cars like that first let's go into the app of turo and see how easy it is to use and how you would search for a car rent a car so first uh you got to have a android or apple phone doesn't matter it's a free app to download you download it on your phone so once you download the app and you set up your profile which takes less than three minutes to do if you're familiar with setting up any app on your phone and putting in your personal information pretty much the same there before you're able to rent any car I recommend putting in your license and also payment information this way if you ever do find a car to rent you're able to do it on the spot so you could do that put in that information in the beginning or wait until you find a car that you want to rent then you put in that personal information so now let's go to the search of which cars you could get in your area obviously if you live in more metropolitan areas you're gonna have a wider range of choices to choose from if you want want exotic cars to everyday regular cars as low as $15 a day. So currently I'm filming this in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, but I actually live in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And in Myrtle Beach, there's barely any exotic cars. I think the only one is a Corvette. And that would be the top class car that there is in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. But I'm visiting family in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and there are a ton of options. So I actually searched this car, the BMW i8 2019, and there were 21 options for me to rent uh, within the area of where I'm staying in Fort Lauderdale. Not to mention, if you're looking for a Rolls Royce, a Bentley, Lamborghini, Ferrari, they have all of those cars. So first, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into the search part and depending on where you're gonna rent your car, you could do it at the airport that you're gonna be flying into in a week or a couple of days. I actually booked mine two days before, so this is kind of a last minute thing and I was still able to get it at the same price that I looked at it for months away. So if you decide to book it at the airport, you could actually have the car delivered to you, which is a great service with this. So you don't have to always go to the pickup location like I did. Uh, so I actually went with a family member and we drove to the pickup location. I picked up the car and then drove back. Just because I, I'm already in Fort Lauderdale, I don't need to uh, get it delivered. And if I were to have it delivered, uh, this car specifically would have cost $100 to have it delivered to my address, which I believe was nine miles away from the pickup. So uh, obviously I didn't need to spend an extra $100 to rent it. So I just went to the pickup location to get it. And it also, of course, it depends on which location you're gonna have it delivered to. So once you pick your location and the type of car that you want, you could have certain filters to look at it from the lowest price to highest price or in terms of relevance. You could even look for a specific make and model of the car. So that's what I did with this car. I was able to look up the exact car, BMW i8, and it gave me 21 options in the search results. But if you wanted to just look for exotic cars in general, you could uh, click supercars, exotic cars, there's uh, economy cars. So depending on what you're using the app for, there's a lot of different options. And each car that you find in the search results will be provided by a certain renter and you can look at the reviews of that car, the experience, also the renter itself. So someone who's renting cars, for example, this car, 
um, the guy I rented from, he's got 14 cars that he's renting from. So I was able to look at all the different reviews of the cars that he has in his profile and it was all good reviews, it was all positive. So if you're renting a car like this from somebody who has zero reviews and zero cars like other cars that they're renting out, I would be a little weary of it. But because the guy that I'm renting from, he had a lot of different cars, this had a lot of good reviews. Uh, he just started in September 2019 renting this car and it's November 2019. So he's been renting this car and it already had 16 trips or 16 reviews of this car. And on the consumer side, for example, me renting, I also have a profile that says how many cars I've rented, what type of reviews, if I left the car clean or dirty, whatever. But considering that this is my very first rental car through the app of Toro, I don't have any reviews on um, me at all. So not sure if it was a risk on the renter's part to allow me to do it, but it allowed me to do an instant book. That was also one of the other features that I put in the search was to allow me to instantly book a car like this. Otherwise, kind of like with Airbnb too, depending on your profile, you may have to submit a request for the car and they have a, a choice to allow you to rent a car or not. With this, I just put instant book and this is actually one of the cheapest cars to rent on an instant book. So with the instant book option, I just paid for it. I put in my license information, my credit card, and I was able to purchase it. So just be aware, whatever price you see, it's most likely gonna be a little higher when it's time to do the final checkout. And if we look at my final receipt, we'll see that I got a $25 discount. That's because I was able to use my friend's referral code just for signing up for Turo. I got $25. So this was my first uh, rental. I apply the $25 credit and I got $25 off. So it actually would have been a little, it would have been $224.67 compared to $199.67. For this car, it offered two different types of insurance. Uh, one was with a $500 deductible, the other one was with a $3,000 deductible, depending if there's any damages or not. I went with the minimum, just the, uh, the $3,000 deductible because I'm not doing anything crazy today. I'm just filming a few videos. If you're not familiar, my channel is all about credit cards and travel points so you could travel anywhere almost free. And if you wanna learn more about that, you could hit the subscribe button. Once you decide to purchase on the app of Turo, it gives you the direct messaging uh, access to the owner of this car. So I messaged him, I said, hey, I'm excited to use the car. And he said, okay, thanks. And then uh, I asked him for his address because in the description, when it gave me the details, it didn't give the exact number of the address of the street that it was on, it gave the coordinates but not the number so I messaged him, ask him asking him for the street address and he messaged it right away this guy was really good he answered every single message I sent probably within 10 minutes so it definitely made me really happy considering that this car came with a $750 refundable deposit. To be honest, I'm not sure if that $750 refundable deposit is with exotic cars like this or other cars, but that was the option with this car. Along with the details and access to the owner, it gave other information pertinent to renting the car, such as the documents that came with the car, rules that came with the car. The only rule with this car was to not smoke in the car. Otherwise, it's a $200 fee. I don't smoke, so no issue there. So that is the purchasing part of the app for the consumer side. Now let's talk about the pickup and other parts of my experience with Turo. So pickup was at 10 a.m. on November 12th, and the pickup was pretty flawless. I got there 10 minutes early. I messaged the guy saying, hey, I'm here a little early. Is it okay if I pick it up? Two minutes later, the car pulls up into this uh, luxury apartment building and I get the car, it was a flawless handoff. So I walked up to the car, I got the keys. The owner said, just you know, look around if there's any dents or scratches, let me know. I looked, there wasn't. And uh, that was it, I got the keys to the car and I was on my way. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it took me about three or four minutes in front of the apartment building to figure out how to close the door to this car. I wasn't really sure and I got in, it was kind of like a spaceship, I didn't really understand. Maybe I should have asked the owner how to use it, but a couple minutes later I was able to figure out how to, how to drive. I actually had to take out the owner's manual to figure out how to do the convertible how to bring it up and down. So pickup was pretty smooth. I'm driving it right now. I have this for 200 miles. Anything over 200 miles is a fee and it all depends on the terms with the specific car that you decide to run. And if you want to use Turo, you could use my link down in the description 
below. I think if you use my link, you might get a discount as I was able to get a discount with this car, but click that link and you'll see for sure whether or not you could get a discount. So I'm gonna have some fun with this car, do some driving, and I'll let you know the complete Toro experience a day after I return this car and get back to you.